Hey guys, how's it going? Alright, we're going to continue section 13.4. Now you've learned how to graph sines, cosines, and tangent functions, the basic versions of them anyway. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use those to solve trigonometric equations, but we're going to do so on our graphic display calculator. Alright, your learning goal for this video is that you're going to use your GDC in order to solve trigonometric equations. So, why do we need our GDC in order to solve trigonometric equations? Well, let me show you the first one we're going to try to solve in this video, and then you'll hopefully understand why it is we're going to need some means other than just a unit circle. All right, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be solving this equation, the sine of x equals negative 2 fifths, for a value of x that's in degrees between negative 180 and a positive 180 degrees. Now, why do we need our GDC for this? Well, because we don't know any values on a unit circle whose sine is equal to negative two-fifths. And you might say, well, that's not all that hard to deal with because we have solved, when we were working with triangles, a simple equation like the sine of x equals negative two-fifths. All we need to do in order to solve for x is use the sine inverse function. And assuming that your calculator is in degrees at degree mode, as it ought to be for this equation, since x is measured in degrees, then you would have found out that x is approximately negative 23.6 degrees. The problem with that method is that it only gives us one of the angle measures that we're looking for. Yeah, that angle measure is between negative 180 degrees and 180 degrees, but by now you know that trig equations can have so many solutions um, that using the sine inverse or cosine inverse or tangent inverse isn't 100% effective for us. Not if we're trying to find all the solutions in a given range of values as we are here. So our new approach is going to be this. What we're going to do is we're going to use graphs on our calculator in order to find all the angles between negative 180 and 180 degrees whose sine is equal to negative 2 fifths. And here's the way that that's going to work. Let me give you a preliminary basis before I actually show you the calculator stuff. Simply what we're going to do is we're going to take each side of the equation and we're going to graph it separately. We're going to graph, for instance, then y equals sine x on our calculator. And then what we're going to do is we're going to graph y equals negative 2 fifths, which I hope you recognize as a horizontal lines equation. And then what we're going to do is find the intersections of those graphs. So there's a strategy. Let's go ahead and figure out how we actually do it. Now, side note as we continue, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to solve trigonometric equations on the TI Inspire. So if you've got a TI 83 or 84, I'm not showing you exactly um, the keystrokes that you're going to use, but all the same principles that I'm going to show you on the TI Inspire can apply to what you're doing on your 83 or 84. And the things that I'm referring to are entering the equations, changing window settings, um, changing angle measure settings, as well as finding intersections. And you'll see all that as I go through the process of solving this equation. Now the first thing that you always want to make sure you're doing whenever you're solving a, an equation on your calculator with the graphs, especially involving trigonometry, is that you want to make sure that your angles are being measured in the correct unit. So what I'm going to do right now is go to my menu and go to settings. And I'm going to make sure that my angles are in degrees. All right, that's done. The next thing I need to do is that I need to make sure that my window settings match up with the range of values that I was trying to solve this equation for. You'll recall that in this equation, we are trying to solve for all values of x between negative 180 degrees and positive 180 degrees. And so, simply, what I'm going to go ahead and do is change my window settings to match. Simply, I made my x minimum negative 180 degrees, and I made my x maximum positive 180 degrees. And then if you're on an 83 or 84, you're going to want to make sure you change your skill. So maybe you go by 45 degree increments, maybe you go by 20 degree increments, depending on what kind of range of values you're going to have to be working with. The Inspire will go ahead and scale it automatically for you. 
And then once you make sure your angle is measured in the correct units and that you've got the correct range of values um, for, for what you're trying to find for your angle measure, then you want to go ahead and graph each of those two equations that we were talking about, y equals sine x and y equals negative two-fifths, the two sides of the original equation. So I'll go ahead and graph y equals sine x. There it is. Hopefully you remember that graph. Uh, remember we said that the, at zero degrees that the sine... Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. That the sine of an angle would be zero. And then it would go up to positive one and then back down to zero, then down to negative one and so forth. All right. Turns out we have one complete cycle. Because remember the period of a sine function was two pi. Well, 360 degrees, which is the difference between negative 180 and positive 180, is also equal to 2 pi, right? Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and graph that y equals negative 2 fifths in our y2 equation. And it will be a horizontal line, as we said before. All right, and then the final thing is that we've got to see how many solutions are we going to have in the interval that we're looking at. And the way we're going to determine that is by how many places these two graphs intersect one another. And here you can see it appears that they intersect once around here, pretty close to negative 180 degrees, once around here, and that seems to be it. It doesn't look like they actually intersect again before we're past 180 degrees. So our last goal here in solving this equation is we need to calculate these two points of intersection. Now hopefully you remember how to calculate an intersection on the 8384 if that's what you're using. On the Inspire we're going to go to Analyze Graph, we're going to go to Intersection, and first I want to go ahead and try to find out what the intersection, the first intersection is on the left here. I want to figure out where these two graphs intersect right here. And it's asking me for a lower boundary and an upper boundary. And so what that means is let's move this vertical line to some place to the left of where we think the answer is. And then it'll start asking for an upper bound, and we'll move that next gray line to the right of where we think the intersection is, and hit enter. And it will come up and tell us the point of intersection for those two graphs. Now remember, we were trying to see where the sine of x was equal to negative 0.4. Well, negative 0.4 just corresponds with the y value that we already knew. Negative 156 is going to be the angle measure that we're looking for. It's the x-coordinate for the point of intersection that we care about. So one of our solutions is going to be negative 156 degrees. Go ahead and write that down. I'm going to have to do a couple of things before I can get back to a screen and write it down. All right, but negative 156 degrees is one of our solutions. All right, and then we'll just go through the same process again to try to find the other solution. We'll go back to analyze graph. We'll find the intersection to a lower boundary to the left of where the next intersection point is. Then we'll do the upper boundary to the right. Remember a little bit ago when I said why using the sine inverse of x won't get you all the solutions? Well, this is the one that it did give us, negative 23.6 degrees. And then we found another one because we were looking at the graph. All right, well, negative 156 degrees and negative 23.6 degrees are the values of an angle whose sine is negative 0.4 and for which the angle is between negative 180 and positive 180. And notice that I just round both of those rounded both of those solutions to three significant figures because no other directions were given to me. Sometimes I'll say round to the nearest degree and so forth. Just pay attention to those directions. All right, we're going to solve one more equation with our calculator here in this video. And that will be this one. We're going to solve in the interval from negative 3 pi over 2 to negative pi over 2, the equation tangent of x is equal to 5 minus 2x squared. And just as we did before, the basic idea is that we're going to make a function or a graph for each side of our equation. So we're going to make one graph that's for y equals tangent of x. We're going to make a second graph that's for y equals 5 minus 2x squared. And then we're going to see where do those two things intersect one another. All right, so let's get to the calculator then. And let's go ahead and clear the last bit of graphing that we were doing. And start over. Now, this time, 
did you notice that the angle that we're trying to find is measured in radians, it's not measured in degrees. And so I need to go back into my window settings, well, your mode on your TI-83 or 84 calculator. Here it's going to be going back into settings in the menu. And I want to make sure I change my graphing angle to radians and say OK. And also we want to make sure that we set our boundaries to the correct values. So I'm going to go ahead and make the left boundary negative pi over 2. All right, and it'll change that to a decimal approximation. Then let's go ahead and make the right boundary positive pi over 2. Or rather, I guess we are supposed to do negative 3 pi over 2 to, to negative pi over 2. So let me change both boundaries again. All right, there's the correction for that. Our upper boundary, or your x maximum, on your TI-8384 is negative pi over 2. And you see it's giving me the decimal approximations. That's what I was trying to say earlier, but now it's actually visible. You don't see the y-axis because it doesn't fit between negative 3 pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Then let's go ahead and graph our two functions. We got the right angle measure. We got the right window settings. Okay, just ready to go ahead and graph the two functions now. Starting with y is equal to tangent of x. All right, now we're looking at one of the cycles for the graph that you've seen before. You've seen how you have vertical asymptotes in the graph of a tangent function and that this is the basic shape that the graph of a tangent function follows and that, that gets repeated over and over again between each pair of vertical asymptotes, right? So we're just looking between one pair of vertical asymptotes at one cycle of the tangent function, it turns out. Now that's just the window range we are told to use. Then let's go ahead and graph the other function 5 minus x squared minus 2x squared. And as you know, that's going to be a parabola that opens downward, like so. All right, well, turns out those things didn't intersect whatsoever, did they? So there's not going to be any solutions to this equation, not on the interval that we're looking for. So as the problem stands right now, we'd have to say that this equation has no solutions. Now, I don't want you to have watched this video and not see how you make solutions. You can see that it's possible not to get solutions on specific intervals, such as this right here. But what I'd like to go ahead and do is fix that where we're actually going to get some solutions. So I'm going to change the upper boundary right here to positive pi over 2. Note the change there. And then let's go back to our calculator and let's change our upper boundary to pi over 2 and see if that gives us any solutions to this equation. So then we're back, I'm going to go ahead and change that, that upper boundary, or my x maximum if you're on the TI-8384. You can see I'm changing it to positive pi over 2. There we go. And now we're looking at two cycles of the graph. You can see the first cycle between negative 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2. And then you see the second cycle between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And that cycle does have a solution for the equation that we're looking for because you can see they do intersect right here. And so we need to go ahead and find that intersection. So I'll go back to Analyze Graph, pick Intersection, pick a lower boundary to the left of the intersection and upper boundary to the right of the intersection. And remember we're being measured in radians here. 1.16 radians is the value of x that makes that equation true in the interval that we decided to look for. All right, there we go. Let's write that down. Now you've seen how you can use your graphing calculator to solve trigonometric equations. By the way, the strategy of solving equations on your calculator by finding the intersections of the graphs of both sides of the equations, that works no matter what kind of equations you're working with, as long as it's possible to graph them and find their intersection, right? So you don't just have to save that for trigonometric equations. Use it for whatever kind of equations you want to solve on a paper two style test where you've got your calculator. All right. Thanks for your attention. Hopefully this made sense and you were able to do this on your 83 and 84 if that's what you're using. See you in class, everybody.